minus 10 seconds, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. morning good afternoon good evening you're watching pnt i'm your host shorn like a shropshire sheep up front this week according to numerous online articles one professor in texas claims that remnants of a gigantic asteroid exist buried beneath the surface of the moon Dr. Peter James, professor of planetary geophysics at Baylor University, stated in a recent paper that an enormous asteroid struck the surface of the moon, forming the largest crater on the dark side, and burying itself deep below the lunar surface. The resultant crater, known as the South Pole Aitken Basin, is more than 1,200 miles wide and several miles deep. Utilizing data taken from NASA GRAIL mission spacecraft and topographical data from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, Dr. James and his team discovered that the 4 billion year old crater gave off significant gravitic anomalies that indicated a gigantic mass of metal buried hundreds of miles below the crater. Dr. James puts things into perspective in the article, stating, Imagine taking a pile of metal five times bigger than the Big Island of Hawaii and burying it underground. James and his team postulate that the asteroid likely struck the surface of the moon and embedded itself within the mantle close to the core of our lunar neighbor. Calling the crater one of the best natural laboratories to study catastrophic events, James hopes that an eventual return to the moon will provide the samples needed to determine the exact composition of the moon-bound metallic mass. For PNT's part, while we're intrigued by the possibility of learning about the formation of our solar system, and more than grateful to the moon for taking one for the Earth, we can't help but remember what happened the last time mankind discovered a large object on the moon and dug it up. Giant floating space baby, anyone? From amazing asteroids to insect invasions, the next story in our weekly roundup of the weird takes us to South California, where local residents are apparently dealing with the consequences of mocking insects with a nursery rhyme. According to numerous postings online and a report from the National Weather Service, meteorologists scanning the skies were surprised when their equipment registered what looked to be a huge storm cloud, which was odd because it was a clear day and there were no storms forecast. Puzzled by the strange radar returns, National Weather Service meteorologists contacted weather spotters in the area for a visual confirmation. Far from an unexpected storm system, however, the spotters reported that the cause was not a sudden storm, but in fact an enormous swarm of ladybugs. Called a bloom, the swarm in question was flying about a mile above the ground and was nearly 10 miles wide. While ladybug blooms are fairly common to the area, scientists are uncertain as to why the tiny red beetles gather together in such huge numbers. Theories for the cause range from seasonal mating behavior to a stimulus response to changing environmental conditions, including temperature and food scarcity. Familiar to most gardeners, farmers, and children under the age of six, the ladybug is an important beneficial insect to the agricultural industry as the tiny creatures have an affinity for consuming aphids, a small insect that can infest crops, leading to massive destruction. South California has long been a major agricultural area, providing a perfect home for the beetles, and even going so far as to import ladybugs in order to help the crops stay healthy. National Weather Service officials state that the enormous swarm caught on radar was likely caused 
by the perfect combination of increasing temperatures, length of the day, and lack of food sources. Last seen heading in an eastward direction, the swarm is likely to move north to cooler temperatures before returning to the area. For PNT's part, while we can certainly understand the need to beat the summer heat, we cannot help but wonder at the true motivations of the swarm, and what the dreadful consequences will be when they finally discover after all these years that their homes are not on fire and their children are not gone. We'll be back with the final part of our program in just a few minutes, but first, a word from our sponsor. Halo. Halo Shampoo presents the true story of Sir Lancelot and the Dragon. Hey, look at yonder maiden. A lady in distress. To the rescue. <laughs> Fair lady, your slightest wish is our command. What causes your grief? Look, my hair. What evil spell has dulled your tresses? I know not. I just washed it, too, with this. With that? Don't you know soaping dulls hair? Halo glorifies it. Halo is not a soap or oily cream, so it can't leave a dulling soap film. Made with a patented ingredient, Halo needs no special rinse. And quickly removes loose dandruff. Ooh, Halo leaves my hair so soft and shining and wonderfully easy to manage. Why not glorify your hair with wonderful Halo shampoo? Halo Shampoo Halo! Welcome back! And remember, the next time you shower, say hello to Halo! For the final part of our weekly roundup of the weird, PNT is pleased to bring you another fascinating UFO report drawn from the MUFON database. Filmed on May 13th of this year, the footage appears to show an odd silver colored cube rotating and rapidly moving through the skies over Columbia, South Carolina. Let's have a look at the footage. to see on this but you can make it out would a drone look like that
So what was the strange silver cube captured on film moving rapidly through the South Carolina skies last May? Let's run down the possibilities. This time around, we can obviously eliminate birds, clouds, flares, meteors, civilian or commercial aircraft, and most known military craft. Top among the most likely explanations would be a balloon, perhaps an escapee from a child's birthday party. While it is certainly possible, there are several factors that can call this explanation into doubt. First is the apparent ability of the object to hold its own course against the prevailing winds. Close examination of the foreground trees show that the ground-level air currents were running counter to the flight direction of the cube, indicating a motive source powerful enough to resist the winds and make four right-angle turns during its flight, something which a stray balloon, kite, or even a piece of stray trash would be unable to achieve. But more on that in a moment. With balloons ruled out, that would bring us to the next likeliest culprit. Drones. Drones are certainly capable of the maneuvers we see the object perform during the video, but the shape of the object itself tends to call this into question. Cubes do not easily lend themselves to controlled flight. They lack the necessary curved wing surface to generate lift and provide too many angular surfaces in order to move easily through the air. Despite these facts, it is still reasonable to assume that a drone could conceivably be fitted with a custom cover shaped like a cube or any other number of things. So, possible, but it would require a fairly decent knowledge of aeronautic principles and a large amount of ready cash. Another fact that speaks against the object in the video being a drone is the utter lack of noise that a drone would produce, especially when fighting against a prevailing wind. Drones would also struggle under these air currents to rotate smoothly around a central axis, as we can see that the object in the video does. The final piece of evidence against drones are the four right-angled turns the object makes before finally disappearing behind the trees on the right side of the frame. PNT has applied a tracking overlay to the slowed down footage to allow the directional changes to be more easily seen, and indicated with a red circle when the changes occur. While there is camera movement from the witness, PNT accounted for this by comparing the foreground elements against the motion of the camera, enabling us to determine which of the object's movements were caused by the camera and which were independent motions caused by the object. We found no evidence that the four right-angled directional changes were due to camera movement and were far too sharp to have reasonably been made by a drone battling strong winds. So, with most of the logical possibilities ruled out, PNT then turned our attention to the possibility that the footage could be a hoax. Despite thorough analysis, PNT found no evidence of artifacting caused by the addition of CGI or any evidence of the use of green screen overlays. The background commentary also lends credence to the sighting, with the reactions of the witnesses appearing to be honest and genuine and seemingly just as puzzled at the source of the object as we are. So, with common sources for UFO reports accounted for, and finding no apparent evidence of a hoax, we are free to consider the boundless possibilities presented by the unknown. Given the extremely odd shape of the object, its smooth rotation along a horizontal axis, and the four controlled right-angle turns made against the wind, is it possible that this craft is exactly what it appears to be? A technically advanced craft or probe from an unknown source, and perhaps under the control of an unknown intelligence? Could what we are seeing be an unmanned probe gathering information on our planet, simply doing little more than collecting data for further analysis by our invisible visitors? What would the motivations behind such a project be? Simple curiosity? A prelude to possible peaceful contact between our civilizations? Or something darker? Or perhaps even beyond our imagining altogether? 
Could it be possible that we are simply the intergalactic equivalent of lab rats, an entire planet of sentient beings unaware of their true origins and purpose, deliberately kept ignorant of their own potential, and under constant observation by a possibly hostile alien intelligence? Participants in a vast experiment, the purpose of which remains unknown, and perhaps always should. Discomforting thoughts certain to plague all my fellow lab rats in the wee hours of the morning when we collectively scratch at the invisible walls of this maze we call reality. But whether or not the oddly shaped object caught on tape rotating and making abrupt turns in the skies over Columbia, South Carolina was an aerial escapee from a Rubik's Cube themed birthday party, a well-crafted hoax, or something else entirely, we'll leave up to you to decide. Sound off in the comment section below with your thoughts. That's it for this time, faithful viewers. Be sure to click like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when PNT presents your next portion of The Paranormal. I'm your host, reminding you to keep an open mind, because a closed one shuts out the truth. <laughs>